so next I thought I'd just take a bit of a tour of a lot of the tools that I use uh, and why I find them useful. Uh, on the side here, um, I've, you know, this is my sort of tool tidy. I've got, I've got a, um, a point file. Um, this is sort of what I use for once I've got a print and I've just got to tidy it up after printing. You can get these from auto stores. Um, they're really cheap. They're about five or six dollars. It's a flat file. It'll have um, one side without any uh, file on it and the other side will have it on it and, um, and on the top and bottom. And, and the thing about them is, is that you can use them for a while and once you've had, you know, once they're stuffed, whatever, you can just chuck them out and buy another one. So uh, you should be able to find these at any um, auto, auto parts shop um, or even some hardware stores have them. It's, it'll be called a points file and it'll be in the thing and it's just a small flat square file. But it's, it's a very handy little thing for cleaning up, um, like, you know, the lizards, they, they chirp here. Uh, then I've just got an old, uh, well, it's, yes, this is a very old pocket knife. This was my great grandfather's, but it's, um, it's very good for cutting all those wispy fine bits off jobs. So it's, uh, it's, this is a nice old pocket style pocket knife that you can sharpen like a razor. So very sharp and, um, and I'll just, um, any bits that I need to clean off, I'll just scrape it along them and it'll just take them straight off. Uh, so they're probably the main tools I use for cleaning up. Um, I've got three different uh, sanding blocks um, that are varying in grit. I actually put the grit sizes on it so that um, I know which one I'm using and they're easy to spot. I've also got a, a 600 one here but I haven't written on it, it's a bit worn out. So you can pick those up at hardware stores. They're, they're uh, really practical and, and the point is, is not to use a lot of pressure, but just to use light pressure and, and speed and you'll clean up uh, parts really quickly with them. And then they won't wear out too much. A little uh, a toothbrush, like a, just a, um, a cheap one from the store. Um, I find that's handy because sometimes you really want to, um, I mean, like the strangest things. I've had uh, moths fly in here at night and get caught up and stuck in the belts. and you know, just being able to brush them out. So it, it like, it's the funny places where you find things are handy. Um, and also, you know, originally when the filament used to get stripped on the drive gear, I used a toothbrush for that, but I just use it for, you know, scratching stuff off um, that I don't want to damage it, but just to clean things off. So this is just a barbecue match that I uh, cut with a, um, uh, with my pocket knife into a bit of a point. And rather than getting this um, PFT grease on my fingers, uh, this is basically a synthetic grease. It's the same stuff that MakerBot provides it, but in a bigger thing. I'll actually squirt a bit on that tip and then use that to apply it so that I don't have to wear gloves and go through that whole process. So um, just, you know, you could use uh, a skewer, a wooden skewer and just sharpen it down. Or this was just a match from, a, from the barbecue. I've just got a paintbrush for dusting stuff down. There's the Cricut uh, spatula. So it's, uh, um, I ordered this on eBay after some guys recommended it. These are fantastic. Now it's not a bit, very strong spatula, but what I find is when there's a part on the build plate, if you can just get it into the edge underneath it, it'll just, uh, and you can just sort of push it in without too much pressure. Once it gets under there and you just sort of push it in, it just pops straight off. Now, it works because you prepare the build plate the right way, and I'll get into that a bit later. So it's not a particularly strong tool, and if you're really rough with it, you'll, you'll stuff it up. Um, but uh, I've had this now for, well, only a few weeks really, but I've used it a lot, um, and it's holding up just nicely, but I think it's just a thing of preparing your build plate so that things don't stick too hard to it and then just getting it in onto the edge and just sort of running it along the edges and then sort of working it in and then the parts just snap straight off so it works really well uh, really like that it's a really handy little tool you can see i'll leave some stuff in there it's one of the reasons why i'm planning to build another one of these tool holders for the other side so i can get all the junk out that i keep inside the uh, replicator um, print area outside and out of the way. Um, obviously you need to have some sort of uh, scissors. I've got a little pair and a big pair of uh, titanium 
scissors, which are really strong. Um, and that's got a sharpener on it, which is quite handy. And uh, that's for like cutting ear, ear tabs off. And I use these ones for just trimming the filament when I'm reloading. Uh, you've got your blue tape. I've got a bottle full of uh, metho, which I use pretty regularly for getting rid of uh, grease on the build plate. And this is a uh, little container of glues, like super glues and stuff, which uh, I'll use for sticking parts together. And um, another really handy thing to have is a, is a bin, because you're always chucking stuff out that's like, you know, little strands and things. So having a bin right in front of the, of the printer, just to get rid of all that stuff when you, when you get it off, is a good idea. If you're going to do any mechanical parts that you want to have fit together, I uh, highly recommend getting a set of reamers. I'll pull the big one out because you'll be able to see it then. Um, so reamers are essentially like a drill, but they don't drill a hole. They just ream the hole out to a specific size. So if you're printing parts and you want them, uh, mechanical parts that you want to have joined together, and you want to make sure the holes work really, really well, uh, invest in a set of reamers. This is uh, a set made by Dorma. Their metric sizes from 1.5 up to 12 mil, all standard sizes that you get bolts in. And uh, so I don't know, it's uh, maybe $100 for a set like this. Um, but you know, once you've got them, you have them for life. And you've just got to make sure that you oil them periodically so that they don't um, rust. Uh, and, um, but yeah, they're, they're a really good thing to have highly recommended if you if you're doing mechanical designs and you want things to fit together